Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be going over a Volcano Tamer design. And of course, that means in today's video, we're going to be going over my favorite Volcano design that I think it's the most efficient. In terms of Volcano Taming, let's go over some of the things about the Volcano Tamer. A lot of the times, the Volcano Tamer run into a couple of issues. You have a great heat source, a lot of volume, a decently long eruption period. And that means you get a lot of magma. That volume of magma, though, Although it comes out at 1700 degrees, the magma actually solidifies at 1409, meaning that you only get around 300 degrees of temperature before you have to deal with the igneous rock. Of course, if you were to dig it out with something like a robo miner, the robo miner is going to cut the heat in half by mining it, meaning that you lose half of the mass. You also have to deal with heating up the robo miner from the mining process. And because of that, you have to cool down the robo miner. So not only are you having to cool down the robo miner, you have to mine the igneous rock. And then what do you do about the igneous after you mine it? You, you start to run into a lot of issues and taming a volcano starts to become a hassle. My design actually solves all those problems and we'll talk about that in our design today. To get it started, a volcano, if you guys are familiar with the hot magma, using airflow tiles like this surrounding it and having it in a vacuum is going to be the easiest way to handle the hot liquid without losing any of the thermal energy and so that you could safely secure a lot of the magma because of the airflow properties and magma being a liquid the magma cannot actually touch the walls that are airflow tiles meaning that they're floating in space so to speak and by having the airflow tiles surround the outside layer of my magma tank right here and this tank is actually rather large if you guys do want to do a similar design to this uh you guys don't need a size this large you guys could shrink this up i just wanted to have a lot of space just to have the luxury of it but for this part this tank in the upper half is just going to be accumulating magma now in our design we have a lot of automation with doors how the design works is the magma spills out over here and we'll actually let you watch through a process. So let's let it rip. So the door is about to close. That pushes out magma over here. That spills into the mesh tiles. That mesh tile is made out of steel. The window tile right here is absorbing the energy from the magma. And once enough energy is absorbed, the magma becomes a debris tile. It's cooling down and it's almost there. And bam, solidifies, pops out on the right side corner. And we close the door on it to push the debris into a tile right there. Now, that means that we push the hot igneous that's at 1400 degrees into a pool of lead. This extracts the remainder of the thermal energy inside of the igneous rock. And it also means that we don't have to mine out the igneous because it's solidified into a debris tile. That happened because we controlled the magma spill so that it wasn't enough to become a diggable tile. Now, we needed the door set up here with the weight plate because we needed that as a sensor to reset the system. Now, this means that the hot igneous right here with the hot thermal energy is consistently just there sitting to keep heat energy in our heat sink right here. So not only do we get the heat energy from the magma that's over 1400, we also get it from the igneous rock that's below 1400. And because we're going to be powering that to a geothermal plant right here, or in our case, a steam turbine setup, we basically have a lot of leeway to bring that down below 100. So that igneous rock is going to be beneficial then and there. And now that's how the design works. The glass right here, the window tile made out of diamond, acts as a heat sink to the bottom of the steam turbine. We could use that as a power source and then convert the heat into power. Of course, you could use this for anything else as well with the window tiles down here. You could convert this to a petroleum boiler, sour gas boiler, whatever you want to use the heat for, as this right here is basically how the heat's being dragged out. Now, that's just a quick overview. Let's go into the design a little bit deeper. So you guys are probably wondering, what are the nuances about this? And that's probably just going to be the automation. So the automation seems a little bit complicated, but it's not really that bad. We'll start from left to right. This is just a vacuum door for the steam turbine, easy aqua tuner sensor. This thermal sensor right here, the text it so that if the steam is hot enough, we open the door. So we stop the heat transfer from coming in so that we don't overheat the steam and start running the turbine at an inefficient rate. Now the part that matters over here, 
to get it started we have a separated tank up top you guys have to build the tank somewhat similar to this i would say this part of the design cannot be deviated you have to have it like this exactly with the mesh tiles right here as well following the same suit so this right here has to be identical and same thing with this you guys can flip flop the design but the debris always comes out on the right we can't change that without causing some of the design problems to occur and then once you guys have that design set with the airflows with the doors with the insulated tiles where they're at the airflow tiles are just copper doesn't matter what that's made out of your mechanized doors right here have to be steel your insulated tiles have to be obsidian now strategically we have to have insulated tiles in these spots that's because of how heat transfer works in this game and because of that we have to have insulated tiles stop the copper tiles from melting basically if you guys didn't know mechanized doors don't transfer heat in a vacuum outside of the tile immediately above it so the mechanized airlock will transfer heat to a tile above it even in a vacuum otherwise it will not transfer heat to the tiles left and right of it or below so the airflow tiles here are safe and that's why we have an insulated tile here, because otherwise the magma gets pushed upward, doesn't spill, and if I put an airflow tile there, it gets heated up by the door, which is not good. Now, same thing with over here, this mechanized airlock with the steel, insulated tile, that's there for a reason. Now, the automation, let's go through the process and the checks. So first things first, the entire build uh, comes from the bottom right here. What the bottom does is we use the weight plate at the bottom, which is set to below 201. And that's going to be 201 is basically the weight of the door. The door weighs 200 kilograms when it's closed and we have to have it below 201 so that it closes and opens. Basically, if we have the debris solidify, it's going to be above, causing the door to close. And then once the door is closed, we need it to be able to open. So the below threshold has to be heavier than the door. Now, that's how that works. And let's look at the automation for that. Once we get a signal, what happens is, is that we get a red signal that closes the door. We have a filter gate to the side right here to one second. That's because when the debris falls on it and the door closes, goes through the closing animation the debris floats and because of how the signal works it flip flops and closes halfway reopens closes halfway reopens we can't have that happen and that's why the filters here on one second this forces the door to close every time now the other side of the signal from the weight plate this goes into a filter gate into a xor gate this creates a flip flop basically means that once this is red this goes one red two red and then we go one green once the door opens again, which sends a signal to open the door. And then once the second green goes, basically we get a red signal again. That allows for us to create a flip-flop very easily to open and close this door. Now, once this door opens and closes, what we have here is a controlled magma spill. It turns out that six tiles in this format with an airflow tile here. And if you open and close the door, it pushes enough magma over the ledge into the pocket so that the igneous rock when it solidifies it's not large enough that you have to dig it it's going to become a debris tile instead so this is very critical to keep at this size so this part of the design you cannot very much modify you have to keep it the automation here is a little bit different this automation here is to control how much magma spills into the bottom we basically have a element sensor and a volume sensor right here hydrogen pressure if there's no magma here, which means that it's basically a single layer, and then the magma pressure here is below a certain amount, we allow the store to open to refill. That is only possible because of the AND gates automation right here if this door is closed. So if this door is open, this door has to be closed because of how the sensors work on this side. There was a weird wire that was not connected but should have been. Basically, the door signal comes from right here. If this sends a green signal, we make that red, not allowing this to open. And that's how that works. So now that this is sending the green signal because it's open, this door cannot be allowed to open. Now that this is closed, this has that leeway. Now that this is waiting for this sensor to say that it's below and this sensor to say that there's no magma, otherwise the door is not going to open. We have another sensor right here that does not allow the door to open if we don't have enough magma on the top. 
This means that it's going to auto shut off if the amount of magma stockpiled on the upper tank does not meet the requirements. This sensor is set to above 500 on the top, meaning that if there's too little magma, we can't refill it and the system kind of fails itself. So this sensor is set to below 500. This sensor is set to magma. If we see magma, we send a green signal, which sends out a red signal. If there's no magma, it's a red signal that we flip to a green signal, which allows us to refill the tank. Now, of course, all that is possible and we extract more thermal energy with the lead. To do the lead part right here, all you have to do is do a small little hook like this and put a dispenser and sweep some lead into the tile. During the process, you guys just have to put a little bit of igneous into here, let it melt the lead, and then it's gonna work. Now we have one more automation thing and that's the signal switch. This signal switch is how you start the system. If it's off, meaning that there was not enough magma up top, not allowing this to open anymore. And because of that, you had to wait. Usually if you wait through that wait period, the system's gonna auto shut off and that's because you don't have enough magma. Now, you could turn on the system by opening the door and closing it right away. I don't wanna do this now because I already have magma there and doubling up the volume means that the build fails. So how you would turn the system on once everything is there you have to open it and immediately close it that allows the magma to be there and it'll go through this motion basically like that it opens magma fills immediately it closes allowing this to spill out of course now you can see that that opened to let a little bit of magma in and it closed immediately if you guys are curious about this, this filter gate set to 5 seconds. The gates here is, this is a AND gate, this is a AND gate, this is a AND gate, this is a XOR gate, this is a filter, this is a filter, this is a NOT gate, that's a NOT gate, liquid element sensor, hydro sensor and another hydro sensor my glass tiles or my window tiles here are made out of diamonds insulated made out of obsidian and igneous mesh tiles made out of steel doors made out of steel but guys that has been the volcano tamer design we extract the magma and spill it out in a controlled spill so that we get the debris tile igneous so we don't need to mine it not only that we continue to extract the heat from the debris tiles and allow that to become a heat source by itself. One last thing about the design is that at the beginning of this, because you're in a vacuum, you don't want to break the vacuum. And of course, you don't want your duplicates to sweep the hot igneous rock. I recommend putting a door in the beginning, not allowing access so that they don't accidentally take that to build something. That would be a very hot tile, pipeline, whatever it is you're going to use that hot igneous for. Don't let the dupes do it accidentally and build this door at the beginning. But guys, if you guys have any questions about the Volcano Tamer, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.